Hello and welcome back to Direct Capital Channel. Welcome to today's video about whether the Bitcoin bottom is in. We're going to be looking at this indicator, something we were looking at in the previous video. So if you haven't checked out that video, check it out because it is a part one to this video in a sense. Let's dive into today's video. This is the Bitcoin Investor tool and we're going to be looking at these green areas. These green areas just tend to be historically relevant errors for us because they tend to produce outsized returns whenever we accumulate here. So that's the green area here, right over here as well. And we even have a small green area over here if we zoom in, but let's dive in and let's just piece apart each green area and do some TA on it so that we can find out any historically recurring tendencies and try to base off of that what can we expect going forward and whether the Bitcoin bottom is in or whether it still awaits us. So this is the first area. This is going to be the first area zoomed in right over here, 2011. So this is the 2011 period. We saw a wedge on Bitcoin's price action. We actually saw a lower high and a lower low. And what we had is a breakout from that wedge. It was a clean breakout. And then we approached this uh, two year moving average. So this is basically the very key reference point because whenever we see a breakout past this moving average, we tend to see a nice exponential rally towards the upside. So essentially speaking, we saw a resistance, right? We saw a rejection from this uh, two year moving average, but then we actually managed to flip that resistance into a new support. And that's what actually springboarded price into a nice exponential rally. And what we need to know in terms of this picture perfect technical break out where we just have a breakout, a pullback, and then a successful retest followed by continuation is that every time, or at least in this particular example, we see an exponential rally, then a pullback. And then once again, we see a uh, reaffirming price has reaffirmed the two year moving average as a support. And then it continued and it didn't touch it. It actually started to go to the upside as we'll see over here, right over here, right? So this is the moment where we got that uh, nice retest and then a bit of consolidation for a while. And then we actually saw a uh, trend continuation into the bull market, which was fantastic. So that's something to bear in mind when looking at 2011, we saw a wedging structure. We saw a lower high, a lower low, and we saw a picture perfect technical breakout, breakout, pullback, retest, trend continuation. And then later we saw a nice test of support of the two year moving average and then continuation into a bull market. So let's have a look at this moment in time. Let's have a look at this moment in time and do some TA on that to see if we can see any alignment. Well, in fact, there is yet again a wedge. You could even argue that this is an ascending triangle, but there is a small incline, a slight incline, but I'm not going to uh, emphasize that too much. An ascending triangle is what we're looking at over here, a higher low right over here, right? So this is going to be the higher low that showcases premium buying to us. People are happier to buy at a slightly higher price right over here. Once we see a pullback compared to this time over here, right? So that's premium buying right over there. And then once we actually get a breakout from this wedge, you can see that this is a breakout, then a retest and then trend continuation. But this two year moving average is figuring as a resistance. So we return to test this wedge top as a support again. So we're seeing a lot of technical things take place here. But then once we actually springboard from the top of this wedge again, you can see that we have a breakout followed by a very brief retest, a small continuation. But then actually we, we see a pullback to the two year moving average again to test it as a support. So already just looking at these two examples, 2015, right? This is the 2015 period and the 2011 period. You also see a wedging structure. In this case, 2011 wedging structure. In this case, it's also a wedge, but you could argue this is an ascending triangle, but it is still that sort of psychology, right? It's that very similar psychology, but also of course, the two year moving average is figuring as a resistance until it figures as a support. So you can 
can see that here it's a resistance and here it's a support again. And then later in time, you see a rally towards the upside, a pullback to just reaffirm this two year moving average as a support. And you're seeing exactly, it's just a copy paste situation where you're seeing wedging structures where the two year moving average is a resistance, then a support, and then it actually gets reaffirmed as a support. So this is fantastic because we're seeing recurring, historically recurring patterns and tendencies in Bitcoin's price action whenever it's in a area that produces outsized returns. So that's fantastic. So let's move on to the next chart then. We're going to be looking at December 2018 to around April 2019. So that's essentially going to be this period, this period right over here. Let's zoom into it. So you can see we're still seeing a wedging structure. We're seeing a higher low right over here and a lower high. We see a breakout past the wedge, a pullback, right? We're testing this wedge top as a new support and then rallying all the way up, but we get a very clean breakout from this two year moving average but we actually don't see a pullback to reaffirm it as a new support. We don't get that at all in the future. We just see a rally towards the upside like we're seeing right over here. So we didn't get that. We didn't get that at all. We just got a clean breakout and then a trend continuation, which was quite exponential. So what you can see here is that if we zoom in, we're actually getting a very clean breakout towards the upside, exponential rally, and then we get a retrace. So we actually didn't see a lot of the historically recurring themes here. We only saw that there is a wedge. We, we saw there's a higher low, so there's premium buying. The two year moving average figured as a resistance, but only once we were in the downtrend. So this was essentially a bearish confirmation, but nothing too spectacular in terms of following through on historical tendencies. But of course, this wedging structure is very much important. We see wedging structures all the time in history. And that's something to bear in mind going forward, because if we have a look at this period of time, so if we just cycle back, this is the period of time which was, this was a very brief period where we were in an area of outsized reward if we accumulated here. So if we focus on this area right over here, we'll actually notice that the two year moving average is figuring as a resistance and we're actually having a confluent resistance with the top of this wedging structure. So look at how we're seeing a rejection here, a rejection here and a rejection here, a very confluent resistance aligning with that two year moving average. But then once we actually see a breakout from the structure and we also see a very small brief pullback to test that structure and then break through the two year moving average. So you're seeing this support test later on and then an exponential rally towards the upside, but it's quite limited because we weren't really in this area of outsized returns for a long time. It was a very brief time. If you just focus back to the previous periods, the previous periods in price action, this was a very long time of accumulation, a very long time. We had many, many months of accumulation here. We also had many, many months of accumulation here. This was actually a shorter time in 2011. But of course, this was 2011. This was nine years ago. So you can notice how when the market was a little less mature, more volatile, it had a smaller market cap, it didn't need longer periods of time of accumulation and consolidation because it was a smaller market cap. You didn't need many buyers to really push price up into an exponential uptrend. So that's something to bear in mind. But over time, it's very important that these ranging periods become a little bit longer so that you can get enough buy interest and demand into Bitcoin's price action, which will further prop up price towards the upside. And this was a very short period uh, of accumulation. It didn't really decline deep enough uh, relative to this two year moving average. It was a very shallow retrace relative to this area of outsized return. But I'm also wondering here in terms of this wedge, is it better to just assume that this is a higher low and assume this is a fake out? 
or to assume that this is in fact a lower low. But in any case, this is something we have to bear in mind when trying to understand what could we potentially find out about this period right over here, because at the moment we are seeing a higher low. We are seeing a higher low and you can even argue that this two year moving average is going to figure as a resistance in the future. And with the halving approaching right over here, could we potentially see an ascending triangle in the making? And of course, we've seen this ascending triangle before, right? This is the ascending triangle, if you'd like to call it that. In any case, it's a wedging structure that we're going to be looking for. So first of all, should we be waiting for this ascending triangle? Because if we're seeing an ascending triangle forming and just coiling into the apex of it as it approaches the halving event, that's going to be a very fascinating technical sign, which coincides and has confluence with a very fundamental change to Bitcoin's protocol. And that's a fantastic thing because the ascending triangle is a fundamentally bullish pattern. But the thing to also bear in mind is that this higher low doesn't necessarily have to hold. This premium buying higher low is something we've seen in the past, right? We've seen this higher low in 2019, we've seen this higher low in 2015, but remember, in 2011, we saw a lower high, right? So this lower high scenario could be argued that we saw this in late 2019, 2020. Of course, you could argue that this was a fake out, but let's just say that in history, we have two lower lows in these accumulation wedging structures and two higher lows. So that's a 50-50% chance, really, based on history, historical data, that this higher low is going to hold. Because of course, it could turn into a lower low like this. So that's something to just bear in mind, because if it doesn't hold, we're probably going to see a lower low, which is going to be a very attractive opportunity. It's going to be a lot of fear. It's going to be followed by maximum pessimism, but it's ultimately going to be a level, a price point that precedes a wonderful financial opportunity because we are in an area of outsized returns for bargain buyers ahead of the halving right over here. And before we wrap up, I'd also like to mention that you could also see a lower high resistance form, right? Because of course, this ascending triangle narrative looks like an attractive thing, but we actually haven't seen this region be tested as a resistance. So we actually have to look for a resistance uh, rejection from a from the top of the wedge, right? Because this could easily become a wedge at around this region. We have to look at a potential lower high forming, right? A lower high resistance like we saw over here, a lower high resistance. This is the ascending triangle, so that doesn't count, but this lower high resistance is over here, right? So we have to also bear in mind that we could see a lower high resistance form at any point in the future just to form that wedge. And once we have that additional price action, we'll be able to say with better certainty or at least a better confidence in terms of probability how this wedge is going to look like because we still don't have much price action to work with. This is only speculative. This is a predictive trend line and this is a predictive trend line. So we have to wait for more price action. But in any case, this video was all about showcasing what the historical price tendencies are whenever price is in these regions of outsized rewards for bargain buyers. And we also looked at what should we potentially look out for going forward based on these historical tendencies. So I hope you found this video valuable and useful. Please consider dropping a like and of course subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I'm Rex Capital and I'll see you in the next one. Speak soon.